Welcome, Negronis with Nord, episode number 81. We have a very special guest. Anthony Polcari is here. Everyone recognizes him. I swear, I just posted uh, like an hour ago that you're going to be on the show. I've got like right. 10 people texting me being oh, like, God. what do I need to do to be involved in this conversation? <laughs> like, can I come over right now? Um, you have maybe seen his content, uh, you know, going viral over the last couple of months. He is the king of fit checks. He is DC's most eligible bachelor, and I'm so happy you're here and this worked out. Oh my God, thank you so much. That introduction is way too kind. You are too <laughs> kind, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, I am very, very honored. Uh, I think some people in DC would go, I'm maybe not the most eligible, but, <laughs> but I'm honored hey, by a designation, I'm gonna run with it. We're saying it, you just, like, I'm gonna you just run with it, it, I think. Wish it into existence. Absolutely. Uh, no, but I am really happy to be here. Thank you so much, Jason, it's awesome. want to ask the question that is, I think everyone's burning question, which is, are you for real? <laughs> is, yeah. this, is this real? Yes, um, and believe me, I couldn't act this out if I tried. And I, and I, was, I was an actor in high school. I could not act this out if I tried. This needs no embellishment. Um, you know, this account is basically, as I tell a lot of people, it's a little glimpse into my soul. It's a little glimpse of who I am, this is how I carry myself, whether it be quirky to some or enlightening to others. This is what I am. This is what I've been my whole life. It's what I've been raised to be. And uh, it's funny that, you, you know, a lot of people, including people that were, you know, teachers of mine, and actually one of them was quoted in the Washington Post as saying this, that when they first started teaching me in high school, they didn't think I was real. There was no way that this guy must be a fraud. There's no way he's like this. <laughs> and like, we, we're so tight now. But like, he was like, it took me a few months of having you in class to know that you're actually this real person. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think, We've gotten to a place in this world, in you know, country, world, whatever, that if you show any positivity consistently, then you must not be real, mm -hmm. right? And like negativity has become, and polarization has become such a big part of the daily life yeah. that anybody that has even a glimpse of consistent positivity is not real. Yeah. And that's not the case. There are, you know, this is how I actually live my life. And look, I have my moments where I'm not exactly the happiest, and times can get tough and hectic, and. You know, I have, I have other emotions besides a smile, but I, I do live my life trying to find as much peace of joy as I can in each day because that's how I think you sustain a good life. I love that. 25 years old, the world hasn't beaten you down yet. <laughs> I, you know, and I hope it doesn't. Knock, knock on granted here. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the content, I would say it goes beyond, you know, it's not so much just the positivity, but, but like how earnest it is, you know? And I think that like, you know, social is, you know, foundationally a place where I think people go to try and maybe portray a slightly different version of themselves, right? That like, I think a lot of people feel they're, they're playing a character. Even, you know, myself who's been putting on the internet for, you know, 15 years, like the version of me on the internet and me are like, diff like slightly different things. What I felt was so almost unnerving was how honest it felt. You weren't trying to like portray a lifestyle, you know, you weren't out there, um, you know, pretending to be something that you weren't. It's like a really simple thing, but, but difficult to do. Was that like an intentional choice? I mean, did you look at the internet and, and the content that was out there and said, look, there's a, there's a gap here. Or were you like, oh, this will be fun. I'll like around on Instagram and see what happens. That's, it's the latter. I mean, I thought about, you know, when I first started, so I was a broadcaster in high school and college. And that's what I wanted to do with my life. That was, and I kind of, and I, I say this kind of candid, I kind of chickened out and decided to go more of a safer route, corporate world. And there's always been that kind of itch to do something creative using my voice and delivering a message. So I said, well, you know what? There's Instagram out there, and I also was in DC, and I still am in DC, where I was a new person. I moved there, but when I made the account, it was less than a year I'd been there. And I'm not the biggest like bar guy. I don't go to, I mean, I go to bars, but I'm not a big like club scene night. I don't go out till four o'clock in the morning. That's shocking. That's, <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked. Yeah, you know, I, I, new, new reveals here, here in, uh, in the <laughs> you podcast heard it here today. First. Right, um, but no, so it ended up being more of this 
I kind of wanted to blend my itch to get back into broadcasting, even if it was like to five people, just to start doing it again and like actually just having fun being creative. And at the same time, I saw these other influences that influenced me in terms of giving me places to go, things to do on a weekend that wasn't going to a bar or a club. So I was like, well, maybe there's a way I could just, you know, talk about it in an honest way. If I get a couple hundred followers, maybe a few thousand, then I've done my job. Mm -hmm. There was no intention to be this level and be growing at this level or be an influence. I never thought of it. I thought of it more as a great creative outlet for me to do to kind of balance out the corporate day. And then as it got, you know, we started posting and I started off the first month or so, it was like 30 likes, you know, 10 likes. And, you know, I always knew just keep, I'm just gonna keep, I, w I wasn't caring about it. I was like, you know what, I'm enjoying doing this. I actually like creating content and slicing and dicing and editing. And as much as I loved the broadcasting piece when I was younger, I actually found the digital editing a cool part too. So I kind of discovered a new passion. Kept that going. And then once it grew, um, come July, August, that's when things started to you know, kind of take off. And for the longest time, it's like, oh, it's gonna stop at 10,000, it's gonna stop at 15. And then it didn't, <laughs> it's just, it's still going. That was where, like I got into like the 30s and 40s for that, 30, 40,000, that's where I started to think, well, what could I do that's a good service? Mm -hmm. Because now the platform's growing. I don't want this just to be the Tony P show. Mm -hmm. This has gotta be something that's you know, real. And again, everything has been real up to that point, but real and actually valuable to people. And that's where the masculinity piece started coming in. And also more recommendations and the more of the recaps that I did. Everything I try to do has some level of inf information that someone can take from it. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I get to a point where I can't do that anymore, where I'm just doing a Tony P show all day, I'll quit this because I have to provide value. That's my belief. So yeah. that's where it's kind of led to. And now I'm just sitting here going, what's the next step? <laughs> and it's yeah. like, it's, and I, I'm a strategy consultant by day and I have no strategy for myself. <laughs> so like, I didn't even know there was a gap. Like I found out over time that there are a lot of female creators that do what I do. And I have the privilege of the fact that there aren't a lot of men who do this because of a lot of the masculinity restraints that we put on ourselves. There should be a lot more creators like me. I'm not, really, I'm not doing anything novel here. It's just seeing a guy do it, I guess, is the novel thing. Yeah. What are those constraints? What do you think? I think a lot of men are pushed to be the sto stoic, stoic, very, you know, don't show emotion, not just like, okay, cry or be vulnerable, but even like positivity or passionate about something or being warm and like down to earth, we have to be like this kind of like a unapproachable type of emotional, like in, a, in like, like this polished emotion with like stoicism tacked onto it. And I'm just not a believer in that. And I think a lot of men are held back from, you know, going to the theater or doing art or, you know, be, you know uh, painting or uh, other types of physical art and the, you know, the music side of things because people are like, oh, well, you know, yeah, it's not really the macho thing you should be playing sports all the time. And I've played sports my whole life and I love music. And my concept of masculinity is that you can do both or you can do everything. You can dive into every part of your personality at the same time. Mm -hmm. This isn't something that's a binary, one moment I have to be this, I have to switch it over. No, you can be it every day of your life. Like, I love football, I smoke cigars, but I love watching Golden Girls on Saturday nights. So like that's, I mean, not many guys do that. And that's, you know, fine. But, Musically, like I love, you know, people like, you know, the Rolling Stones and, you know, ACDC and Hootie and the Blowfish, but I also love Barry Manilow and Kenny Rogers and, you know, Teddy Pendergast and Marvin Gaye and like, that's, you know, that's not the normal palette, mm -hmm. but I like it. So it's like, that's just, you, you can be a little bit, you know, kind of in, a diff, in different worlds at once. That's what I would, that's how I would phrase it. Two part question. One is, do you feel that message is is landing, right? Because it's one thing to, you know, have the Tony show, right? And it's like, oh, this is like kind of different. And this guy's kind of like quirky and funny and 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 like I'll follow along here and do the day in the lives and, and all of that. Right, right. Of course. And then you're talking to me about uh, what do you say, vibrant masculinity. Yep, vibrant you're talking about go. dating, you're talking about, you know, being open about your feelings. Like that's a you know, some some people may be like, "Well, I didn't. I don't know if I signed up for for that." How is that? Like, how has that been bringing people along on that journey? I think for the most part, people have been incredibly supportive of it. Um, in terms of my you know my following, as I've grown into that, I've had moments where I've grown at a higher pace. 
So people are, are, are liking it because I think they were already knowing that, that, was the, that, that this was what I was doing. Like the, the content that I put out, the week recaps and the weekend stuff, I kind of showed vibe masculinity through my actions. I think people started just to see that and also just in my tonality. Like I'm a, I have a little bit more of a warmer disposition. I have this kind of more vibrant type of way of speaking. So I think people already understood that I was maybe not the most hyper masculine guy or hyper traditionally masculine guy. So I think that was always kind of part of it and people bought into it and they were like, oh, this makes sense. He's now just verbalizing it. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't think it was a huge transition. Oh my God, you know, we're gonna cancel this guy because he's you know, not a macho, macho man. I think it was more just, hey, well, it makes sense. You know, listen to it. You know, so even like the ones that maybe not love it as much, they may go, yeah, interesting point. I'll take a couple of bullet points here and call it a day. Men on the internet who are talking about fashion, let's say, yeah. right? Like, um, you would fall outside of the traditional archetype and it would feel more approachable. Do you think that is like helping men who, you know, maybe are thinking about masculinity? There's a lot of conversation about toxic masculinity. I think we all have a pretty clear idea of what that is. And I think yeah. there's uh, luckily this increasing push to like, push back against that, right? Um, and find a like healthier form of masculinity. We had uh, a creator, Mo, on the show recently who was just talking about that as well. But yeah, how much of that do you think contributes to it as well? Like being that you've got the message and the messenger, right? right? How do you think about those two things? Right, I mean, I think that's actually, you crystallize something that I haven't thought about vibrant masculinity, vibrant masculinity like this. I think a lot of men aren't exactly approachable as just in their regular life. Like a lot of guys like, you know, give off like this kind of like I'm distant. And I think that's something that is a kind of a, 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 a point that they can, that we can all do. I can be better at it, we all can be better at it. Like being more approachable. I think, again, that comes with like a warmer disposition, more down to earth, like adopting delivery, right? I think that's a really big part of vibe masculinity is being, is being approachable. Mm -hmm. Being somebody that is actually, you know, hey, I wanna ask you a question, I'm having a tough time. Let's say you're a leader, you're a boss in a corporate world. How do you how are you able to handle a you know someone who works under you, or works with you, their issue in the office? How do you handle it? Be approachable. That's a big part of masculinity, mm -hmm. environment masculinity. So I think that's like that's definitely tied together. And I think if I don't you know if people see me on the street and come up to me and say, hey, what's going on, Tony P? And I'm like this standoffish, mm -hmm. rude person, then it totally destroys the message because if the messenger isn't legitimate, then the message won't get through. Mm -hmm. People really react well to people that actually walk the walk. Mm -hmm. And that's my biggest thing is I will never not walk the walk mm -hmm. because then you, you lose everything you're saying. I think the question is one like, how concerned are you with people thinking that you are cool? Because a, a lot of people go to social to for validation. Uh, oh, yeah. I, if I'm being honest, am desperate for people to think I am cool. <laughs> yeah, what is your relationship with like being cool? It's a great question. I think I could do it in stages. So when I was younger and I was in kind of early middle, early lower school, middle, elementary school, middle school, I was, all, I was not the most popular kid. I hung around the teachers a lot. I was like, the, as I was an only child, so I, I knew adults a lot better. I grew up around adults. So I was more comfortable around them at five and six and seven and eight than most kids my age were. But that also hurt me because I wasn't having those relationships with people my own age. So I got into, you know, first, second grade. I was kind of the awkward kid. I was this kid that kind of like, where was I fitting in, right? So I dealt with that for four or five years. So there was a part of me that was, in, that was, that was, that was kind of ingrained in my head where it was like, hey, I'd like to be cool. So when I was in fifth grade, I changed my name to AJ. Oh, nice. I went from Anthony to AJ. And I changed my name with the goal of becoming cooler. I wish I was there oh. the day AJ walked into school oh. for the first time. And, you know? and, and, and you're right. And look at look at my new look at my new name. Um, like, oh, it was like a rebrand. Yeah. Look at what I did. I didn't even know what a rebrand was. Yeah. But like I did that in fifth grade, and I started to get a little more popular for some reason. I mean, and, who doesn't want to be friends with AJ? Yeah, right. You know? Right. I mean, and, and my best friend ended up being AJ for those four, three or four years. I you know met new people. I grew new friendships. I kind of dated if you can call that dating in middle school, mm -hmm. and kind of became a little cooler, and I liked that. But I still wasn't, I still was not in, I was part of the in crowd, but I wasn't the in crowd, mm -hmm. right? You know, ended up becoming student body president, and you know, so I got validation from that. But I still like people, I was respected, 
as like I was as a leader, but I was never somebody that was like again the in crowd. So I kept chasing the in crowd through college, and I became student government uh, student body president again in college, and you know dated a little bit, but didn't have a ton of dating success. The new cool for me was chasing a girlfriend, chasing chasing dating. That was that was my thing, mm-hmm. and then after that, you know, once I got into you know actual real life, I hate to use that term, but working life post post grad, I really had a conversation with myself and said, man, like I can't keep chasing this because chasing being cool is only going to lead to you not being cool mm-hmm. because that I mean, hurts me. It, but yeah, no, I, so that's, I real. Sorry, that's real. Sorry, no, I, it's real. <laughs> but like, you no, know, the thing is, it's because it it can really consume you. And it, and it can make you do things that you don't want to do. Like when I was in college, I would, I would go out and drink when I didn't want to drink, like just to fit in, right? And so many people, whether it be college students or, you know, this goes across spectrum, male, female, across spectrum, where people feel that like I have to fit into a mold to get what I want, as opposed to it's tough to be alone on a Friday night. It's tough to, to go out and like, you know, okay, I'm hanging out with friends during the day, but then the FOMO creeps in at night, right? It's not easy to do that. So. Chasing cool was a lot part, a big part of my life until I just said, you know what, I can't anymore because it's leading to, you know, issues with depression. I, I had issues with depression from high school, um, and still battle with it today. I'm very open about that. You know, that was a tough period, like beginning of high school. That's when I kind of had some really, really tough moments where, you know, very, very depressed, and you know, getting into places that weren't good. So I think that was a big wake up call then, and then also when I got out of college. I mean, when you're on your own trying to figure out working life, you realize that there's more to life than just trying to be cool. You have to make sure you can you know, take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. But having that inner peace is so much more important to me. It's like going, getting up every day and having peace. And if I'm a cool guy, you will like seeing me on the street, then that's fine. Mm-hmm. But I know many people that have been famous that were really cool and they, they didn't have any peace. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what I chase now is inner peace. Oh, that's that's. I, I feel like I just went to therapy, so I appreciate oh, God, that. No. <laughs> Thank you could you. no, I, you're totally good. Um, I was looking through some of your content, and oh, this is like a a like very normal guy just right. showing his life, which like again, it didn't feel like you were trying to like do things to make your life look more interesting, or glamorous. Correct. You you richer. Or whatever, then right, right, right. Okay. Of course. So, okay, that's that's the that's the thing. That's what I'm following. Well, now your life does start to get cool, right? You're <laughs> doing all these things. You're on TV. You're sitting in the box. You're being invited to all this stuff, right? right? How do you kind of think about navigating that? And like, I think I was reading the the Washington Post article, and it was talking about just like, you know, look, most of our lives are mundane. You know, and we're we're kind of you're covering the like banality of like modern American life and right. corporate grind, but like increasingly that's not going to be your life. Eventually, yeah. So like, how do you how do you balance that? Do you worry about that? How do you think about keeping the authenticity, keeping that community with you as your life changes dramatically? Well, the, the, I think the first thing it's a great question. It's a very it's actually making me think about you know my own path and. I think for me, it's it's really going back to the fact that I don't think I'm that big and not falling in love with myself. I don't think I'm that big. I still think this thing in my head is going to collapse at some point and I'm going to be back as Anthony Bocari again. Now that's probably very, you know, psychologically not a good idea or it's probably not real. But for me, I've always been someone that has kind of had imposter syndrome in most settings. And also, I've never wanted to believe too much in myself because I don't want to get arrogant. I don't want to get too over the top, right? Of course, believe, believe in myself. I believe that I can do it. I'm confident. But not getting overly confident where I start to really go, hey, look at me. Look at what, what I have now. I go to these games. I sit with these people. I am always going to keep that at my heart that I'm not that big. Mm-hmm. I don't care if I get to a million followers. I'll always go like, well, I want a million too. I want a million half, a million five. I think as I go with that, and you know, wanting to grow the account and never being satisfied, that's how I'll never actually leak in and go, oh, look at me, I'm resting on my laurels, mm-hmm. number one. That's a personal thing. Number two, I think the people that have been there with me, all the, you know, the PHI followers and you know, the followers in general, I, I, I don't want to disappoint them. And like, first of all, like, you know, and these, you know, these people are just mean the world, they're like, kind of like my extended family, if you will, I love them all. And at the same time, it's like, I. You know, 
we were, we're all going through adulting. We're all going through this time in our lives and, you know, trying to grow and trying to figure out who we are and figure, as I say, stumbling upon our vision, right? Uh, what our vision is going to be for life. Mm -hmm. It'd be a disservice if I started doing all this, oh, look at me stuff, because I'm not helping the people that my goal was to help. Mm -hmm. My goal was to actually put out content that could give people a place to feel safe, a place to feel heard, a place to feel that they can resonate. Like I said before, if I don't provide content that's valuable, I'll quit this business. Mm -hmm. that, that's why I'll never leak into that. Now, yeah, I'll post, hey, I went to this game. But I'm always going to do it in a very like, hey, it's a matter of fact thing. Because think about this. I mean, there are people who are celebrities that are way bigger than me across the world. I mean, think about, you know, Taylor Swift and like, you know, all the big celebrities and actors, football players. Their life's mundane too. Like, they just happen to have fame. They just happen to be recognized for a thing that they do. But their day-to-day -day life is as mundane as you and me. They just happen to do it in different settings. So I think like that's something that is not going to change. Like my, you know, I'm not going to wake up and brush my teeth with a golden toothbrush. I'm not going to, you mean, know. I don't say, you never know. So, right, like, I'm not going to, you, gonna, know, you right, never, like, never say never. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, okay, yeah, I might be doing my fits in a nicer suit. Right. But that's not changing. I still get up and match the same way. Mm -hmm. I still will decorate my house the same way. I'll still drive this. Like, nothing's going to change. It just happens to be that you do it in a different setting. And also, like, when you have, a, whether it be money or more material things or access, that only makes you more of what you are, right? Like, so for me, like, my goal is to, is to actually use this opportunity and the resources that I do have now is to grow this and actually to double down on what we're talking about, double down on what I've been doing because my personality doesn't want to change. Yeah. I don't want to change. Like, I, because again, if I become that person that I hate, I will quit this business. Mm -hmm. So like that's the thing that, it's, all, it's, like, it's like internally checking yourself all the time mm -hmm. and going like, you know what, I'm not that big. Yeah. I'm just a guy with 140 so thousand followers. Yeah. There are many people out there like me, right? And even though people are like, well, you know, you, you have a unique vibe. I get that, but I don't believe that I'm this all big and mighty person, mm -hmm. and I never will. So I think as long as I keep that and keep really checking myself consistently, I think I'll be okay. I think that's, and that's the biggest thing I have to think about is, you know, not becoming that. Because if I become that online, I'm probably becoming that as a person with my friends and family. Mm -hmm. And that's an issue too. Yeah. yeah, that gives me a chance to, you know, mention LBJ and Robert Caro, uh, which I always appreciate. But he said, you know, that power doesn't corrupt, it reveals. Which mm -hmm. I thought was that. an incredible insight that basically like, people hide themselves as they're trying to gain power. And then once they feel they have it, it reveals. So you're talking about fame and money and success and it, you know, it just being additive and kind of allowing you to be more of, ideally, right. it allows That's you to ideal. be more of, yes. of who you are. Uh, we're gonna check back five years from now and we're gonna see, uh, I'm gonna play you these clips and we're gonna oh, see no. if we are still there. Um, like a time capsule like to my younger absolutely. self. I love that. Okay, question on, you know, you've grown quite a bit uh, this year, what'd you start the year with with followers? So started, so when I first started in like May or June of this year, it was like a oh, thousand maybe, a thousand okay. So Yeah, that's pretty wild, right? And so, you yeah, know, it's crazy. you'll finish the year <laughs> maybe close to, you know, 200K with how things are going. Potentially, yeah. Um, that's incredible. I want to talk about what's been surprising. Just give me one example of what is something that's been really good that's been surprising and what is something that's been like really disappointing or, or like negative that's been surprising? I, I think what's been incredibly on, in, a, on a, in a positive way, what's been really exciting is how people have actually embraced the vibrant masculinity message. I have not had one person come up to me or one person who's really like DM me and has said, oh, that's a bunch of crap. That's not, you know, men should not act that way and you should, you know, you're preaching it. But like, that's not actually, it's actually been people that have been against it before have actually come around to it. That's been shocking to me because I mean it shows that there are you know so many men out there that are rejecting the Andrew Tates of the world, that are rejecting the red pill movement that has just spiraled out of control in my opinion. And I think that's something that my, if I had a vision for this is to be part of that conversation. There's people like Scott Galloway that are in this conversation also in New York that talks about you know what really good masculinity means and being you know not just a good man but allies allies you know and being you know advocates for people and like doing the right thing right so like there's a there's a space there and I think that's what's really amazed me is that people have actually been open to that yeah. especially people like you wouldn't expect like finance bros coming up to me in New York and you know in D C like the 
kind of the government consultant type that like, you know, are not always viewed that way. Mm -hmm. They're not calling anybody out, but like, they don't want that like Gordon Gecko lifestyle. Yeah. Like, that was a big deal in the 80s and 90s. That was the masculine pinnacle, right? Yeah. And that's not the case as much anymore, which is really refreshing. Yeah. And, and it's good. So that's been the biggest positive. I think it's, it's hard to find a negative. This has been an incredible journey. The, the, only, the only negative that, that, I could, that I could really think of, oh God, this, there really isn't any. <laughs> like, it's, it's, right. like, there really isn't a negative. It's more of, I think, a, a growth area. I think for me, is that I really want to not only reach male audiences, but I definitely, I have a, I, my following is about 70-30. And I have, you know, some some great female followers that come up to me, and you know, and they, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll take pictures and we'll talk. And I always just want to know, like, what can I put out there that's going to resonate more with women? Because I want my I want my content to be a space where everybody can feel safe, where they can feel heard, and they can resonate. And you know, even if it's a piece of my day or a piece of what I'm doing, no matter who you are, you can take a piece of it. And I think my biggest thing is I want to continue to grow and really make my space and my page more inclusive. So I think it's more of a growth area that I want to work on. So I don't think it's a negative. I think it's just more of a, I'm seeing like, hey, I want to do some more work and really put some more content that talks about things that can resonate with a little bit, just some, a little bit more audiences. Yeah. And again, there's parts of my personality that I haven't even unleashed yet. Because again, it's like so. Oh, wow. is, you're keeping, you're is, keeping them like you're, right. you're saving some. Right, because I don't even have the you time to do the, it all. You haven't emptied the clip. I don't even have the time to do it. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't even have the time with you know with balancing work. This and is life. my whole personality, by the way. Right. There's, yeah. nothing, is, there's nothing. No, no. There's nothing else. There's no. If it's, you're it's, thinking there's anything else, there's it's other not. like deeper things like about my personal life and with the more masculinity stuff that I want to dive into that I think is can resonate with more audiences. Thank you so much. I loved the conversation. Um, congratulations on all the success. I want us to stay in touch. Please. Let's check in, you know, when you're a more seasoned, grizzled veteran. And I, I really hope that, you know, your, uh, your viewpoint doesn't change, your attitude doesn't change. Uh, I hope you keep doing what you're doing because it's, it's really fun. You know, I started this business in part because the internet changed my life and we wanted to like, have that experience happen for more people. And it's just so, it's so nice to see that the internet can still be a force for good and it can still, you know, take good people who are trying to make a difference in the world and it can change their lives. And, and I hope you enjoy the ride and, you. you know, squeeze all the juice you can out of it. And I appreciate you making the time to sit with us. And James, thank you for this opportunity. It's so great just to learn from you and talk about this from like a cool, like technical perspective, but also talk about the personal. Yeah, I'm really excited. Definitely want to stay in touch, and you know, just to kind of figure out and pick your brain more. You're you were out there at the beginning of this, and as someone who's now at the ground floor of his own career, I'm looking forward to what's next. I have no answers of what's going to happen in two weeks or a month, but I'm just excited for the ride. And I'm really ex I'm just honored that people like my stuff. The the amount of gratitude that I have is just I can't describe it. I'm just people have embraced me, and I just hope I continue to earn their, earn their trust. I, you know, whatever, however, whatever that means, and just go from there. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. Oh yeah, tell that oh, camera where yeah. they can find you. Yes. Yeah, so you can find me if you want to uh, become part of the Hive, You can find me at, uh, at for Instagram at underscore underscore Tony P and DC. Tony P and DC was taken. Uh, so at underscore Tony P and DC on Instagram, and then it's actually just regular at Tony P and DC at uh, TikTok. Also, we'll be starting to do some long form content on YouTube in the future, so we'll see how that goes. I'll release that information in a later time. Great, thank y'all. Thank you. Va bene. Ah. Really nice. All right. Nicely wow. done. <laughs> Good work. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, please. Let's do it. All right, kind of get down. So I want you to do, you got to do one left down first. You got to do up like this. The second one goes like this. Oh, wait, Nico slides still good. You're good, you're good. Okay, ready, so we got one, one up, yeah. face up, two up, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cross it like an X, you want your arms to fall. Kind of fall like this, mm -hmm. fall nice, and then fold in like this, nod the head, walk a little bit like this, walk a little forward, and then we do the back, and then we do something like this. And then we're gonna do, finally, ready, snap. So we're gonna do a one, two, three. 